Okay. Well, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thanks for uh, coming here, even online. It's my pleasure to, to give an introduction of uh, our facility called the Advanced Lightship Imaging Center. And in this presentation, I will focus more on the integration of Mesospim as a resource of the imaging platform. So I work at this center in Geneva, for people who don't know, is uh, this center is a no-profit independent translational organization, which is based at Campus Biotech in Geneva. So uh, in, this, uh, in this context, in this ecosystem, we, we have developed it in the past uh, years, a facility, a platform uh, that is mainly focused on the imaging of all organ, cleared all organ. We have also 2D and 3D system uh, for uh, conventional microscopy, but within, as uh, Fabiana introduced, we have uh, also three uh, light sheet, no, three light sheet system that are uh, optimized for uh, large samples, such as uh, rodent brains, or with the new ad, the clear scope, even uh, thick tissue slice. And also we have X-Clarity as a the conventional way to, to clear the tissue. So in, uh, so in this, uh, in this ecosystem, in the past five years, we have developed a, a pipeline from tissue clearing, imaging, and data analysis. So when I talk about we, uh, I'm including, of course, Stefan, who is uh, the director of neuro uh, neuroimaging at this center. And he has uh, uh, not only in the role of um, overseeing the projects, but also uh, building of uh, uh, expertise uh, that he brought into the, into the table. And then of course, uh, Ivana, who is uh, um, overseeing and making all the light sheet pipelines smooth. Together with imaging clearing, she's also a training now, um, as has been users and so on, we'll see later. So in this pipeline, we, we have uh, uh, the possibility to clear tissue, as I said before, mainly with X clarity, even though our imaging system are compatible with any clearing methodology. So uh, people can jump into the pipeline uh, from the step uh, two. The, the imaging of wall organ is, is um, uh, undertaken by Mesospim for uh, uh, cellular resolution uh, imaging. And then COLM, that is a clarity optimized light sheet microscope that can go up to the diffraction limited resolution. So these two systems are uh, within the same uh, uh, room and are very compatible between uh, each other so that to allow a fast and easy move from one system to the other. Uh, the data are then collected and uh, analyzed by different softwares and we offer the possibility to the researcher to explore in 3D and VR as well. And then uh, for uh, neuroscience purposes, we uh, included uh, open source software for the registration of the signal into the uh, Atlas, uh, Brain Atlas of reference. So this is, a, this is an example of the imaging pipeline where the same sample is a first image with mesospin uh, getting a cellular resolution. And then the same sample in the same day can then mo be moved to the clarity optimized light sheet microscope. And depending on the resolution that needs to be achieved, uh, go on, under a, a 4X or 10X or even 25X uh, acquisition. So reaching uh, a diffraction limited resolution in plane with the uh, latest. Of course, the column requires multi-tiling always for uh, large specimens. And this uh, a smooth uh, transition from mesospheme and column allows us really to focus on uh, uh, the sample that we want to record and on the region of interest that we want to record at highest uh, resolution. Uh, the column was actually the, the first uh, microscope that we have integrated and the addition to mesos of mesospin to the pipeline made really uh, a change of the game. It was a game changer for, uh, for the pipeline. <clears throat> Why? Uh, first of all, because it allowed us to scan uh, multiple samples within the same day. So within 10, 15 minutes, we are able to scan the entire 
rodent mouse in uh, at cellular resolution. And uh, so this uh, fast screening uh, then is, uh, uh, allows us to, to move in case uh, highest resolution we are needed to, to declare it optimized uh, um, light shift microscope. To give you a little bit of a uh, history, so the first microscope we have integrated is uh, uh, the COLM was integrated in 2017. It takes some months to, before being operational, so some months of what we call ramp up or validation. And then in 2018, we had the, the possibility to, uh, to initiate this collab great collaboration with Hampshire Lab. And uh, Fabian, uh, thanks to this uh, active uh, collaboration with Fabian, we, we were able to, uh, to launch the first uh, mesospim outside the Zurich hub in uh, March 2018, exactly on the light sheet conference, uh, the first Swiss light sheet conference we hosted here uh, at the center. And then uh, again, a few months of a uh, uh, ramp up and then the mesospin was uh, operational in uh, around August. Uh, we realized with the most mesospin that unlikely other uh, custom microscope, we could open it to 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 do to user of course to duly and uh, uh, duly trained and trusted users. So we we started the training in 2019, and uh, we will see the the consequences in uh, terms of cap capacitance of the facility. And uh, more uh, recently, we uh, we have in, integrated a novel light sheet called ClearScope. It's from MBF and is um, uh, mainly aimed to uh, scan thick human slices. So this history is reflected on uh, increase and of growth and activity. So if you see here, this uh, uh, yellow line is uh, the number of samples per uh, trimester. And uh, as you can, uh, you can see here, the integration of mesospin and the uh, in training of mesospin has uh, increased definitely the, the capacitance of the facility. Here, staying in the, the same activity, uh, microscopy activity uh, field, um, in, the, in the graph on the left, we, we see the number of hours per year. Uh, and it's a comparison uh, between mesospin and COLM. As you can see, 2018, the mesospin was still in the ramp up phase. In 2019, it took, it took over the light sheet imaging. Um, uh, again, in 2021, uh, summary of the activity, the, even when compared to conventional. Um, Confocal system, the mesospin still keeps uh, an activity quite high. So basically, the booking system from Monday to Friday, almost every day, the mesospin is, uh, is booked. Of course, it's still far to be uh, comparable to a system that is fully automatized and uh, batched um, and that can work over uh, uh, weekends and nights, but still. Um, uh, it's highly, highly booked. I, I think this is not a super fair comparison. <laughs> so to summarize uh, some uh, comments from uh, our experience about the integration of MSUS PIM in a facility is that it's uh, definitely a user-friendly system, very stable, so it doesn't require so much of uh, maintenance over the year, and that is possible to integrate in a multi-user facility. It, the fact that the, the sample is uh, physically uh, far from the, the optics allows the uh, multiplication and the imaging with uh, all the clearing methods and is uh, highly suitable for neuroscience application. So it gives us the possibility to be introduced to really new, exciting and high-end neuroscience projects. Uh, something that is not obvious in uh, light sheet, uh, light sheet microscopy, the change of, of the multi-resolution is allowed by a no change of objective, so making the multi-resolution imaging very smooth. And uh, finally, I would add, it's not just a microscope 
my mesoscreen is a great uh, initiative uh, which includes a, a community, very active community, well-documented files, JEDI groups, tutorials, and, uh, and events like, the, like this. On the other side, uh, of course, there, are, uh, there were challenges that we had to undertake during the integration of a mesospheme beam or a custom microscope inside a facility. I tried to split them in uh, four uh, points. So first, we need uh, expertise in the team. So expertise meaning uh, at least one person uh, uh, with expertise in setting up custom microscopes. We, did, we need uh, validation, so a ramp up phase, and also to spend some time in maintenance and quality check. Uh, we can consider that after uh, the validation time, uh, the staff requirement uh, is between 0 0.5 and 0.4 FTE. And we, we reason that having a mechanical workshop uh, close by is a great uh, support. The accessibility, so we kind of uh, regulated the accessibility to mesospheme. As I said before, we open it up to training, unlikely the column. Uh, it's a quite long lasting training and Ivana is taking care of, uh, of this one, this, uh, this kind of training with a few users from four to six people per year for the moment. And these users are regular users who come here um, almost uh, every week. Uh, for uh, the non-regular uh, application, we have uh, staff-assisted activity, meaning we are taking care um, of, uh, of the imaging. And then we have uh, an application form, booking system, and fees per hour uh, strategy to, to regulate the uh, accessibility. In terms of safety, there were uh, some safety measures that, of course, we had to undertake after uh, safety um, audits. Uh, some uh, measures that um, action that we took was uh, to put imaging hoods for solvent on the on top of uh, the motors, and then uh, enclosure box all around the metal stream so to to prevent such a for laser safety reason, and then laser safety training for people who are taking care of alignment and uh, um, uh, yeah manipulation of the laser. And finally, at last but not least, uh, data man management. This is a challenge that uh, so us facing from the very beginning, and we are uh, still facing it. Uh, not so much for mesospin because we are talking about only a few uh, gigabytes, but for column generating terabytes, definitely it, it was a big challenge. Mm -hmm. So here we'll spend the a couple of slides on the platform data app access that is the strategy uh, that uh, our uh, infrastructure our IT proposed so we have a, a server that is uh, connected uh, at high bandwidth directly 10 gigabytes to our microscopes and also to some virtual machine for computing and on the other side the same server is con connected with a relatively high bandwidth to uh, some networks of uh, uh, the main uh, collaborators uh, of these centers. For all the external users, we use an online transfer system. And uh, the data, data computing also is a big challenge for this large data set, I would say is uh, the bottleneck of the pipeline. So here at the center, we propose, depending on the requirements on the project, different softwares uh, in the field of the stitching, which for a column is a mandatory in a way, is a, is an obligation, and for mesospin, uh, yes, sometimes. Uh, so we have a Terra Stitcher and Big Stitcher are the main uh, players of uh, the stitching here, and that photon for uh, compressing very large uh, data set. And then uh, segmentation um, softwares, especially 3D segmentation softwares, Maris and Daridis and the open source uh, software for that. And then finally for atlasing, so for mapping the uh, signal into Allen Brain Atlas or other references, uh, we integrated uh, these two uh, open source pipelines, MyRecall and BrainVac. 
And to conclude, where are we going to right now? The new perspectives. So we are uh, trying to translate and scale up, scale up the pipeline into human brain right now and to go deep at the molecular level. So uh, looking at transcriptomics in uh, 3D and then uh, in the infrastructure part, trying to enhance the computing and the data sharing uh, resources. I, I would like you all, I would like to thank you all for, uh, uh, for the attention and uh, thanks to the team, especially Ivana and Stefan who are making a big role in this, uh, in this Alice uh, platform. All the collaborators, uh, users and scientific collaborators and uh, my greetings from uh, the nice view from the sixth floor of campus with the biotech. biotech. We just moved to, to this wonderful uh, sixth floor. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the great talk. It was awesome. Um, there is a question in the chat uh, from Francesco Giardini. Uh, actually, totally fitting. It was about like whether you have experience or if you can share some experience in clearing um, heart tissue, especially with X clarity in case you're... Um, Example. Well, um, yeah, not with X clarity. We we are kind of keeping X clarity from one pipeline that is a very consistent that is for rodent brain for mouse brains. Mm -hmm. But um, the heart that you saw there is uh, it was clear with IDSCO mm -hmm. and labeled with IDSCO. No, we never tried the the heart in X clarity. No. Mm -hmm. There are further questions. There are further questions. Put them in the chat. I think there's some echo. But I think, in terms of, we can also move on. Our next speaker is um, Chema from the Imaging. I think Fritjof has a question. Huh. I had a, yeah, just a quick question, if I may still. Laura, thanks. Thanks a lot. I was just wondering, you showed the user sort of, uh, you know, usage up to 2019, I think. So now we are already two years later, but obviously also interrupted by the pandemic. I was just curious uh, how it's now moving on or if uh, what, what your expectations are, if you are at the limit at the saturation already or yeah, how it's yeah. still increasing or was increasing. It, uh, it, it, the increase was uh, <laughs> consistent, I would say. Of course, the statistics in 2020 and 2021 are not uh, comparable to 2019. Uh, what really changed is that now the mesoscreen is accessible to quite a lot of uh, users. We are counting around 11, 12 uh, users. So this makes uh, the microscopy staff workload lower and uh, the capacitance of the instrument are higher. So to answer to your question, I would say from 2019 to today, we have even higher activity thanks to the fact that there are multiple people that are uh, accessing to the, to the microscope. Yeah, we stopped actually counting the number of samples also because of that, because uh, now people come with their sample and the image and so it's, uh, uh, we are just bearing on the power uh, of usage of the, the machine that we calculate from the booking system. But of course, as Nikita said before, it's, uh, it's still, uh, there is still a need of a, uh, of a person, a specialized person who is taking care of the troubleshooting and uh, training and uh, supporting the, the, the research of mesospheme. So this is uh, something to, to take in consideration when uh, introducing it into the facility. Thank you. 